Welcome, this is Scorecard on CTTV. Over the next 90 minutes, we look back on some of the best sporting action from the weekend. My name is Fentio Tahir Fentio. What's to come today? Well, in the Ghana Premier League, Kumaisa Sanjo Kotoko were humbled in Tamale. Uh, the team United, however, failed to take full advantage. Uh, in the Premier League, similar story. Tottenham Hotspur, uh, they lost uh, in that race for top four, but Arsenal failed to take advantage. United, though, Care to see a hat trick from Cristiano Ronaldo. They are right back in the race for top four. FA Cup showdown, title showdown is done and dusted. It's Liverpool and Chelsea, of course, 2.0 later this season. Uh, also in the Serie A, the two Milan clubs are distinguishing themselves as a two-horse uh, title race in the Serie A. Uh, Borussia Dortmund ensured that Bayern Munich will have to wait until the showdown next weekend to decide if they are Bundesliga champions for the 10th year in a row. All of that to come, plus the latest from the French League. We've also got some boxing for you as Samuel Techi starts his pro career. All of that to come here on the show. is live and interactive on social media. Uh, you can get uh, through to us with your messages, your thoughts on all of the weekend's action. Uh, on Twitter, the hashtag to use is scorecard. I retweet your uh, messages and share as many of them with the rest of our viewers as possible. Preferably as well, you can join us use, using the WhatsApp uh, number on your screen. So send me a message. I'll try and read as many of them as possible here on the show. Uh, it's 90 minutes of non-stop uh, football, tennis, basketball, what have you. For you, the basketball lovers, of course, the playoffs started uh, this weekend. Uh, interesting pairings that are there. We'll try and get into that as well. Uh, so that's what it is. Very packed last 90 minutes. But for now, we'll take a short break. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest and then we can start showing you some highlights. Welcome back. This is Scorecard on City TV. So like I said, <coughs> you can get uh, in touch with us. Use the hashtag Scorecard on, uh, on Twitter. Hashtag scorecard, hashtag scorecard. Leave your messages there, your thoughts, all of them. Uh, no message is, uh, is out of bounds. We try and share as many of them as possible. Even if you think uh, you have second views about the show. I'm interested in your thoughts uh, as well. But um, the WhatsApp number is the other alternative um, uh, there uh, for you. It's on the screen. All right, let me introduce my guest now. The usual coach, Christopher Nimley. Like I like to say today, he's coming here in a sweater. I'm not sure. <laughs> what? Coach, are you? Are you? Is it, do you remember? Are you remembering your uh, your days in America? Which state were you? I'm good. <laughs> oh Lord! I haven't asked you what you okay. how you're doing. Go ahead. Go ahead. How are you, Coach? I'm good. <laughs> You remember? You understand what that means? Eh? Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's how like you told them. I'm good. Okay. Um, that's in reference to you saying, Chelsea, we're not going to qualify over Real Madrid last week. Of course, week. I'm good, man. Yeah. You know, it was a beautiful Tuesday. It was a beautiful week. That day alone summed up the beauty of the week. You understand? <laughs> hey, because for 78 minutes, you guys were super happy. Isn't it? <laughs> So for the last 42 minutes, we were also what, super fantastic, yeah, very bombastic, <laughs> bombinstic, busybastic. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Look, it was sweet, man. Look. Because it was super fantastic. Mm. You called me mm -hmm. and then you confessed. When Chelsea went 3-0 up, at that point, no, you, your life flashed no, no, before, you know? No, you see, when you went 3-0 up, then my phone started flashing. And when I looked at my phone, I saw a flash from Fentil. I said, look at these people. They don't understand where they are playing the match. Eh? Shock. <laughs> you wait. Something's <laughs> happened. So when Modric gave that delicious that, pass. Yeah, delicious. And I started eating the jollof. I said, well, this is good, man. <laughs> this is good, man. That's good. So, where was Mrs.? Oh. Mrs. She was at home, <laughs> but I was watching the game. Ah, in the you watch. So you see, she could tell from the goal whether it was Chelsea scoring. So the moment the Rodrigo goal went in, she called. 
and ya shaya na e se chromatic ni ka ba there's going to be some changes changes in the in the thing so i said you can't start at here going for extra time the moment benzema i don't be busy okay ya me ba me chichu re so i promise her so i have to start to make her happy okay, my brother okay coach is that it how are you <laughs> Ah, uh, coach, no. Oh, very good, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happy Easter oh, to you guys. Yeah, happy Easter. But you also confessed Easter, that, look, you nearly collapsed. I mean, it was a painful defeat. Yeah. Uh, not going to lie. Not because, <coughs> you know, it, it's not one of those embarrassing defeats. It, it's like, it's like seeing the victory and it's having it ripped. The hope that keeps yes, no, you know, away from you. When I but did, it was a... It you was have a, to listen. You know, no, you no. had listened. It, it, it's when I did this... <laughs> <laughs> there was a reason, <laughs> and then people started. You know what they did? The right. moment yes. they started tweeting the picture, mm. I said, I saw them, somebody tweeted the video, and I said, "Look, like I said, it won't happen. Just be patient." Okay. And the remedy started, but it was a good game. It was. It really was. A but good your game. coach really disappointed you. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. But <laughs> let's begin with the Ghana Premier League. Kotoko visited RTU. RTU were back playing in the Tamale Sports Stadium for the first time since their ban. And it was packed to capacity. The amount of money they would have made from the huge crowd that showed up for the game. But they would be even happier with the valuable three points they got from Kotoko. Here is Fabio Gama for Kotoko. Now comes Asma. I'm with a cross and a Tuga. Lovely skill to go past Buedu. He goes down in the box from the challenge of Asma and it's a penalty. What instinctively a lot of defenders are going to do, they're going to use their body once they can get to the ball. To, uh, but it's a huge barge on this man, anywhere else on the pitch. I think Augustine Ronald Frimpong steps up and he makes it 1 0 for RTU. Real Tumble United up by 1 0. It's a very, very composed and well taking spot kick. Here is Gama. Now Sharif. It's Patrick Asma against the woodwork again. And now whistles for the end of the first down. Franklin Akumate separating the two sides as Kotoko gets us going for second half football. It's Sharif Mohamed whose long searching pass is met by Hadir Mohamed. Hadir's cross. Edu's header. And it's a second goal for RTU. Victor Edu has made it 2 0. He's been brilliant with judging the flights of the balls, that lad. But that was so wrong a decision to make. Not the best of headers, not the most powerful header. From Victor Edu. Sadat Mohammed has lost the ball to Sharif Mohammed. Now here comes the Tuga. He goes down in the penalty. Kotoko with an opportunity to have the deficit is a penalty. Up against Yasei. Here comes the Tuga. He's reduced the deficit. It's RTU 2, Kotoko 1. If he gets this right, it's a really good spot kick from the Tuga. And now Kotoko are within one. When the final moments of this game, Abagna, that was close from Abagna, and it's a final whistle. It's all, over. all right, valuable three points for RTU. Uh, in a moment, we'll show you what that does for them, as far as the league table is concerned. But for now, let me show you the other results from match week 25 of the Ghana Premier League. So, Ajana Stars were held by Ashanti Goal. Break, uh, the Vienna Gold Stars, 2-1 winners over Great Olympics. Wonders beat Bechem United 3-2. This result is significant because Bechem United were second in the Ghana Premier League table going into this weekend, eight points behind Kotoko. Now, when Kotoko were losing 2-0, Bechem United were up 2-1. Somehow, they lost by three goals to two. Two late goals from Wonders uh, sinking them into Chiman. Karela United... Also nicked it against Dreams FC. 
Hearts of Oak against the bottom place team in the Ghana Premier League mm. cannot get a win. One all draw in Accra. Ken Faisal, that's an eight successive defeat in all competitions for them now. They lost their home to Accra Lions. Legon City is 3 1 winners over Mediama. So Mediama themselves, things not going great. RTU's victory there. And Wafa finally also getting a win. 3 2 win against Brickham Chelsea. Now, th listen to this. Not one, let's take a look at the table first. Not one of the top six won a game today. <laughs> Kotoko lost, Pichem lost, Jenna Stars drew, Olympics lost, Midiama lost, Hasafolk drew. Unbelievable. Um, but you see, so Pichem United, it still remains eight points between them and Kotoko. If they had held on to that lead, would have probably. The lead, the, lead, the, the lead would have been cut to five points. And suddenly we would have had a title race on our hands. But it appears that's not going to happen. Uh, it's still an eight-point gap between Kotoko and Bichem United. The bottom, though, RTU's victory today is taking them 28 points. Level on points with 11 wonders. So they are very close to getting out of that relegation zone, as you can see. But so are Wafa, who are just two points um, away from safety. So... The competition, the real competition this season is at the bottom. Of, uh, and to determine who goes down or who stays up, because that is incredibly tight. Because from R to U in the relegation zone, all the way up to the team in 10th position, it's five points. It's that tight. Five points is two and a half games, or two matches, if you like. We. Ah, unbelievable. Daniel, let me begin with you. Um, very unforgivable, mis uh, unforgivable mistake from Dalat uh, for, for RTU's second goal. Um, Kotoko wouldn't have liked that, but Bechem United didn't do themselves any favours, and now suddenly that loss looks like nothing. Yeah, at all. And especially from a Bechem point of view, um, because of the timing of the, the, the goals yeah. they conceded. And you see, at this stage of the season, you always have an ear out for what is happening in the other grounds. And I'm sure they would have known that Kotoko were losing against um, RTU. Ten minutes to go, a team that is chasing the title should be able to kill off this game, should be able to see off this game, especially against a relegation threat inside. Yeah. Um, you could tell that 11 Wonders just threw all bodies forward. And when that happens and you are a team at the top of the table, it's more of an advantage. That's how I see it. It's more of an advantage to you when you have your opposition or your opponents coming all out against you. Because then, it's either you catch them on a counter-attack, you can decide to pass the ball around, which they can do, and they've shown that they can mm -hmm. do. They have their experience to pass the ball around and defuse any... Um, There's a lot of experience in that team. Yeah, it's, it's, momentum you know, that crown, it's, it's, but Unfortunately for that, I don't know how that happened, honestly. It's, it's, it's very shocking that um, 11 Wonders were able to turn it around in the last, in the dying embers of the game. 90th minutes, I think 2-2, two, two, and then another time, they had a, a, a third and claim all three points. Because it's, it's very disappointing from a Beijing point of view that they weren't able to capitalize on this. And I'm saying the timing because if Kotoko were losing at the same time Beijing was losing, then you know that it was, okay, fine. They just didn't play well. But to, be, to have a 2-1 lead with 10 minutes to go, or in fact, if I even narrow it down to about six minutes to go, the 2-1 lead... Valuable to one lead. That was, and they would have known that Kotoko were losing. Exactly, because at this point, that's what I mean. At this in point, real time, you yeah. always have an ear to what is, uh, what is happening in life score. <laughs> so, look, for them to let this valuable three points yeah. slip, it's, it's, it's very disappointing because this would have been five points and then it sets up a crunch end to the season where Kotoko themselves have a couple of difficult grounds to go to and you never know what is going to happen. Yeah. But this is, they've really let uh, Kotoko off the hook. Um, they themselves didn't play too well today. Um, they were all over the place, especially the goalkeeper. And this is why I feel like sometimes we need to take our time when we are screaming for players to, to be included in the Black Stars. First of all, the standard of the Ghana Premier League is not up there for us to be uh, insisting that players get their I don't know what he was trying to do there, to be honest. It's for such a basic... It's, 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 it's I think poor, there was no way he was getting to the ball. Like, it's poor decision making. I can't even say it's, a, it's poor judgment. I just, I just, it was just, it was just I just had no idea what he was doing. Yeah, at all. Um, <laughs> Coach. At all. He is that type of goalkeeper. If you, if you follow Dan Ladd, he's rushed. He's rushed, but he hardly comes out to dominate his area. Mm -hmm. If you followed him, maybe this is one of the reasons why he hardly comes. Even at the 
junior level. level. When the team concedes, what's the his biggest piece. strength? His I reflexes. Think, yeah, I think his reflexes are his biggest strength. Hmm. But when it comes to anticipating on these very difficult crosses, stay, don't stay. So he's always taking the decision that I'm not going to come out. I'll stay. And this again has highlighted why he's never been the sort of goalkeeper who usually come out to dominate his area, doers and all that. Because look, this was absolutely it's kindergarten. It's unforgivable. If I'm the manager, I look at it as a look. Maybe you want to pardon him because he hardly does these things. Yeah. But you want to quickly draw his attention that no sort of mistake like that again will go unpunished. And there are, there, there are times where you have to set the rules. That look because if you look at the one deputizing for him, he was also a national or he's also a national I mean, goalkeeper. Yeah. yeah, he it took he to nearly took us to the Olympics. Uh, Olympic Olympics, Games. Yeah. If our player had scored that. But, uh, it was um, yes, yeah. if he had put that ball in the it's back of the net. It's not just one. It's not that. It, it, we had two penalty shots to yes, do it. The exactly. final and and, and, the and Kwame Brown made saves to take us to that. Yeah. And so if he's the one deputizing for Danla, Danla should be made aware that, look, the position of the Kotoko number one's position is not home and dry. You flop, you're on the bench. The next goalkeeper is, at, is brought on to stake a claim for himself. I want to comment on Kim Faisal. I'm a bit worried. Yeah. Very, very worried. Because if you look at the, the, manner, in round, which, the manner in which they, they, they keep going down, like you said, eight consecutive, consecutive defeats, defeats in all competitions. In all competitions. Seven in the league. Seven in the league. One Seven league. league. If, if, if they don't put a halt to that, I think they'll be drawn to a relegation fight. In yeah. fact, as they're a stand, in, yeah. they're already in, involved because they have 21, RT 28, Wafa 26. I am beginning to believe that maybe they'll be the one to be relegated. Because if you look at that the is in the escape by the skin of exactly. the last You team. cannot be two times lucky. Not at the top flight of football in a country. You cannot be. So the earlier, I think I've heard Elijah Grusa said they brought him a new coach, a white, um, yeah. an expatriate to come and stabilize the ship. Because, because that's why, and to. there has to be a reason why Nuruddin Ahmadu would leave. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because he started brilliant. Yeah, he started brilliant. What has gone wrong? Just, you see, there are times where uh, the owners and <clears throat> bank rollers of our football teams are to understand that, look, yes, the team is yours, but... You should leave the footballing decision to those Keep in charge of football managers. and stop okay. poking your noses into technical and tactical matters. Uh, coach, brief comment on Frank Etuga. He's now scored 17 goals. He's equaled Eric Bequin's record for Kotoko in the 07-08 season. That's it. And he's still got uh, five 25 games now. So he's still got nine matches left. Mm -hmm. six the record years. is 22 matches. By 22 Ishmael goals, Ado. sorry, by Ishmael Ado. In the 2002 season, from a look of things, I think he could break that. Yeah, all things being equal, he could break that. First and foremost, he scored lots of goals from open play, and from the manner in which Kotoko seems to be getting all sort of penalties, especially at Babayara, you won't bet against him. <laughs> Come on, I man. will say it like today. That was a clear, that was a clear. <laughs> yeah, was the... Did you so hear what a... I said? You said, especially at Babayara. And uh, it's not Bavaria. It, it, yes, but they still got a penalty. And so I'm saying, I'm saying that the penalty is a penalty. And, and that irrespective is why, of where. That, no, come on. It matters. Man. That is what I specifically said. The manner in which they've been What's the manner? Oh, like the what we saw last week against House of Oak. That's Probably not their fault. They, and I'm not blaming them for being given penalties. Uh, and I'm saying the manner in which they've been penalties are flowing all over the place. Look, let's call the spade a spade. Some of the penalties are deserving of that. Uh, yes. Some too. Like what we saw. Dubious. Like what we saw. Exactly. Against RT. Exactly. Clear penalty. Clear penalty. Last week, it was a not bad so penalty. Mm. Not, don't say not so clear. This <laughs> one, very clear. Last week, not so clear. bad penalty to, to, mm. to be What's given. the opposite of clear? What do you mean not so clear? Ah. What is that? <laughs> when you say not so clear, <laughs> it, it is clear, but it is not clear. That's what it means, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you are the English people. <laughs> yes. What is it not so, so clear? clear? At least somebody I, I, can I, come I, and say, oh, this oh, one is clear. It's clear. To me, it's clear. And to I me, have, it's not so clear. Yeah, 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 and I have, no, I have negated it. And I'm saying see, that. No, not no, is it is no, negating no, no, clear. Not clear. Not yeah. clear. Or is it not, not so clear? clear. That's There's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's an issue there. So, the fact of the matter, for me, if it is a penalty, it's a, if it is not a penalty. It's so there's not, nothing. Yeah. That. So like I'm saying, but look. Credit to your own The record is within sight. Yeah. I think the people at Kotoko 
should be reminding him of that. Because five goals left, yes. se- uh, nine five matches. Yes, yes. yes. I, if I'm the manager, I would have him, I, I'll invite him to my office tomorrow morning and clearly show him the record and say, come on. I think in nine games, as a manager, I'm not going to bet yeah. against you. But no, whatever happens, obviously, we also need to give um, Ishmael Adu a lot of credit because he did it in a 16-team league. Yes. This is an 18-team team league. league. So that's why, that's what even makes that record incredible. four games. Of- yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's absolutely incredible. But all credit to Frank Etuga. He's had a brilliant, brilliant season so far. Even if he doesn't break the record, we'll still respect him. He's now the highest goal scorer. He's not equal Kotoka's highest goal tally in a 16-team uh, season. That record was held by Eric Bequen, so congratulations. After how many games? Uh, co- today? Yeah. Uh, tw- out of the 24, I think he's played 22 matches. Also. Okay. Yeah. okay. So he's, he's, yeah. he's not played. So he's done really well. He's done very well. Um, let's move it on to the CAF Champions League. Uh, the quarterfinal fixtures were played this weekend. Uh, we'll show you two games. Um, the first one, Al Ali. It took on Raja Ak- uh, Athletic Club. They won by two goals to one, but the victory was not without controversy. Take a look. All right, so Al Ali won by two goals to one. We'll come back to this game for obvious reasons. Uh, the penalty that was awarded Al Ali. But let me show you one other game. This game was played in Angola, in Luanda. Petro Atletico, it took on Mamlodi Sundowns, uh, and they also got a victory in the first leg. All right, so 2 1 win for Petro Atletico as well. Uh, what about the other games? Let me show you the four results from the four quarterfinal first leg games uh, played over the weekend. Uh, so ES Setif and ES Tunis uh, played out a nil nil draw. It was a Tunisian uh, and uh, Algerian affair. Petro Atletico's uh, victory over Sundowns there. Al Ali was a beating Raja 2 1. And CR Belustad. Losing at home to with that athletic club by one goal to nil. Okay, these are the first leg games. Now, here is the news for you. Raja Casablanca have officially complained to CAF over the officiating in their 2-1 defeat to Al Ali. And this is why the penalty awarded against Raja in this game Following a VAR review, we're just making you have a look at it yourself. This is the penalty decision, all right? The referee reviewed it, so you can see clearly. <laughs> the referee went to have a look at it, and he gave the penalty based on VAR. Now, look at the penalty incident, and you see why Raja Casablanca have complained to Carl. Not so clear. Now, look at this angle. After a referee reviewed this, this referee, <laughs> he gave a penalty for a handball. <laughs> when clearly it doesn't look at. So there you see. So this, and he says it's a handball. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, of course, Al Ali, uh, they scored the resulting penalty. That was their opening goal. Look at it again. Look, what comes off his... See? Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Look, <laughs> Interesting. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Nimli, we'll have to... <laughs> I'll come back to you. you know, uh, here's what you need to know. First of all, the ball didn't hit his hand. Second of all, even if the ball hit his hand, the rule says, if the ball comes off your own body and comes off your hand, it's not a penalty. And this is a, a FIFA referee. He should know that. Easy. It's unbelievable. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I'll give the guys uh, two minutes uh, to uh, look back on that Cup Champions League action. And then we zoom straight to Premier League action and FA Cup as well here on the show. This is Scorecard on City TV. Watching Scorecard on City TV. My name is Fento Tahir Fento. Um, we showed you some Cup Champions League action as well as some Ghana Premier League action. Still ahead, Premier League uh, action. Arsenal, Tottenham Hotspur, Man United... All of them were in action this weekend. Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Crystal Palace were in action in the FA Cup. All of that still to come here on the show. So do stick around. Uh, but guys, coach, uh, quick thoughts on that penalty incident. Um, Raja are fuming. Rightly so, no? Look, I can imagine what they'll be going through. I can imagine this. Look at the referee. He's demonstrating after being given a second chance to go and look at it. 
he still believes the ball hit the hand of the Raja player. I can't believe that. He's drunk. Maybe is he boozed? Yeah, he boozed. Maybe he boozed. He's dazed. <laughs> Maybe he, he had a bit of alcohol yeah. before coming. To, come, so he's completely gone blind. Yeah. If he's not blind, then something might have gone to him. You see, this is the pinnacle of African football. This is our version of the Champions League. So we expect it's, the quality it's, it's of from football. Tanzania, in Dala. On, Look, if you're a Ghanaian referee and you're watching this, you should be proud of no, yourself no, 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 because no. you don't do better than is what I'm saying. No, but we should be ashamed of ourselves that we are not our referees are not being given the chance oh. to go and officiate this. because this is not quality. This is not good quality. Oh. This is an absolute mess. If I'm a Ghanaian referee, I'll look at him and say, come on, I can do better than that. In the era of year. In the era of year. The era of year. So, so, doing, so that's the shocking doing, part. And, he and, actually, and, and he's demonstrating so, that. So what after, is he? After going back to look at the thing, he's doing this. He's doing this. <laughs> I could just give him one. <laughs> we don't encourage violence against no, it's, referees. It's not about encouraging violence. Like when the referee is completely <laughs> intentionally destroying your job. Uh, Daniel, that coach could can be you, can, is there, it, So, Daniel, is there any circumstance, any scenario where you could possibly understand what the referee oh, is thinking? Two things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's get a bit, Honestly, uh, yeah. a bit academic here. Is there, is there uh, any way... Thank you. A bit academic about what? You said... What is wrong with this man? <laughs> How can you... Attach, no, no, by what you said, we can't prove it. No, but what I'm saying is... It's no, what you, what you blind, said earlier was three things. It's either he's blind, mm -hmm. either he's boost, or something has gone to him <laughs> for, to get him to behave this way. That, you know, <laughs> is there any scenario where you can give the referee the benefit of the doubt? <laughs> Try to, to understand what he's thinking is here. Because I have tried everything possible. I don't seem to get it. Because he's doing this, um, but the boy... Look, Fen, this is not... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll not defend him by what we saw on the screen. I think it's, it's maybe something was going on up there. Yeah. And I, professionally, I don't think he drank something before he went on. <laughs> um, we saw a referee at the, uh, at the AFCON who suffered from heat stroke and it affected yeah. him, the guy who ended the game early. Maybe, maybe he was fasting, he didn't break it early, and he was hungry and no. dazed. No. Dala is not. Muslim. No, the good no, Lord. Because if it truly he was fine, the good Lord would have died. No, because look, Fence, you, ah! you can't, you can't possibly. No matter the angle you look at this, how can you? He's intentionally he giving the penalty. What did he see? It's, uh, even, look, it's, even, it's shameful. Yeah, and that's the point. And, and you see, just to give you some perspective, I worked on this view. Calf didn't add the penalty incidents in the highlights. They, they are embarrassed. They are embarrassed. They are embarrassed. They are embarrassed. They that's embarrassed. why we have to show it separately. Yeah. It wasn't the official highlight. It wasn't. They are embarrassed. This is disgraceful. <laughs> and, and, and you see, thank you, God, for. And again, you, <laughs> look, of course, look, you got a penalty. Now, Fen, Fen, look at this, Emily. Just Fen, go through this. Fen, Fen, and again, the people in the room, the people who called him to come okay, and look at him. Okay, here. Here. I think I think they should I, have I, I don't, caught I don't him it. again. They should have caught him again and said, "No, come back, come and look at it again." We are seeing something very different. Hey, somebody said the referees are rather reviewing the VAR. <laughs> no, that, no, someone said on Twitter that <laughs> Kojo. He says in Africa, center referees rather review video assistant referees. Exactly, <laughs> referees assisting video. <laughs> 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 Kojo says, this is what Coach Nimli should describe as a bad penalty. The Kotoko own is still not so clear. <laughs> 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 PZ, <laughs> my good friend. I get you. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> Thank you uh, oh, for that message. This one says, real men watch scorecard. Not that I know love should <laughs> somewhere. All right. Pelo says, As ah, so what was the actual reason for VAR calling to that the referee to come get. and check because the ball clearly didn't hit the player's hand and by the rules of it's still not a penalty so what are we witnessing no, see when he he initially pointed to the spot so VR called him that come guy this look. thing is not a penalty maybe you come are and look at it no not maybe you are wrong you are wrong but yes. you come and look at it and then yeah. make the right decision then he went and told VR that he saw the guy <laughs> using his hand because oh boy <laughs> look at this thing <laughs> Yeah, this was, this was bad. This was bad. Uh, all right, let's move it on to the Premier League. The top four races between Tottenham Hotspur, Man United, Arsenal. All three of them were in action. Spurs 
took on Brighton at home. They lost by a goal to nil. What a brilliant finish. So Tottenham Hotspur lost. So Arsenal needed to take advantage. Man United needed to take advantage. And then maybe go above them into fourth position. Arsenal, well, they were playing Southampton away from home. They lost by a goal to nil. All right, so that defeat was Arsenal's uh, fourth in their last five games. Uh, they also lost to Palace. They lost to Brighton. They lost to Liverpool. And it's, it's all gone downhill uh, since they said they had three games in hand. What's really going on? We'll get back to that topic. What about Man United? Well, they took advantage, but they had to do it the hard way. They were cruising 2-0. Then Norwich pegged them back to 2-2. But Cristiano Ronaldo, for the second game in a row at Old Trafford for him, he hit a hat-trick and gave them all three points. All right, so let me show you the four results from the Premier League uh, this weekend. See, so there you go. Newcastle also beat Leicester 2-1. Uh, West Ham drew 1-0 with Burnley. The United Southampton uh, games we showed you. The Spurs one as well. Watford, they lost that home to Brentford by two goals uh, to one. Um, as far as the table is concerned uh, for the Premier League, well, the top four race is what's really important uh, as far as it's concerned right now. Man United, um, of course, like I said, so Man United, who won, they have now moved to within three points of Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs lost, but United won. So now, Man United are just three points behind Tottenham Hotspur, who occupied the fourth position. United are 54 points, Spurs have 57. Arsenal have gone behind Man United, so they've slipped down uh, to sixth position. They also have 54 points, of course, but they have a game in hand. And that game in hand is on Wednesday night against Chelsea. From what looked like United had no chance suddenly, there's an opportunity for them. And for Arsenal, they were in pole position to finish in top four. In fact, everyone believed that they would make top four. But here we are. Daniel, how did we get here? For who? For, for Arsenal. Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like yeah, this for the fact, honestly. So. <laughs> no, but did you know he's actually about... <laughs> it's Mikel Arteta. <laughs> who else is it? It's Mikel Arteta. And you see, look, we've gone through this thing. And it's the same issues over it's, and it's over again. It's the same issues. It's almost getting annoying because... And you see, when, when I address this thing, a lot of people take it... Look, I'm sitting here in Ghana. I have no personal problem with At Mikel all, from that. I don't, I don't know him. I've never met the man. I don't have anything against him. But when he was coming, you see, I like football and I like my football to be competitive. There's a certain standard that growing up Arsenal set mm -hmm. that I expect them to be at. And I feel, you see, when you look at how Chelsea does their business with managerial ins and outs, they do it based on a standard. Do you get me? Yeah. When you are coming in, you have to do better than the person who, whatever the person did last season. That's how the, it's, it's progressive. Yeah. It has to be better. It's a must. Yeah. If it doesn't happen, then you get the door. And you can see it is progressing through that when uh, Jose Mourinho came. In fact, from Ranieri to Mourinho to Scolari to everybody, when you come, there's a certain standard you have to live up to. Look at Liverpool and the club. Last season, they didn't do too well. But they've gone back to where they expect to be. And they've put work in place just to make sure that they get back to that standard. They are standards. And you see, I always say that if you are a Man United or an Arsenal and you want to compete... You have to look at Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, because that is the new standard. Yeah. And if you can't compete with these guys, then you have no business calling yourself a big team because they are now the big teams now. That is what Whether it you is. Like it or yes. Whether you like it or yes, they are the big boys now. So if you want to bamba with them, then you have to be of a certain level. And for us now, you see, Ateta is just not that guy. He is just not that guy. Look, you, you, can, you can talk all you want to talk. But at the end of the day, it is the results that will expose you. Expose you. <laughs> Finish eighth in his first season. Okay, fine. He inherited for somebody. But I always say, if you want to attribute the, the FA Cup win to him, then you also have to attribute the league position to him. Because he didn't start the FA Cup campaign. That's somebody true. started and he came to continue and he won. That's so true. then if somebody started the league season and he came to continue and he finished eighth, 
then you also have to take responsibility for that. It is what it is on your CV. Second season, which was a full season, yeah. he had a transfer window in, in, in the summer. He had a transfer window in January. He finished eighth. Then again, he's had a clean transfer window in the summer, has an opportunity to fix problems that made him finish eighth last season. He's had January again. And look at what is happening. And you see, we need to be extra critical of Arteta because I always say it. He got kicked out of the FA Cup in the first, on the third round. That's in January, the first match in the, of the year. Yeah. He's kicked out against Nottingham Forest. He's in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. He's kicked out Liverpool. Those games happen end of January, beginning of February. Mm -hmm. No European competition all season. So literally, from mid-January to now, he's had only the Premier League to think about yeah. and only top four to think about. Now, if you look at Arsenal's position at the time, they were, had a realistic chance of finishing in top he four. Did. And they were fighting against teams like Tottenham Hotspur, who had cup competitions. They had uh, the FA Cup to deal with, Conference, um, League. Conference League to deal with. Man United, who were in the Champions League, were in the FA Cup. They had uh, West Ham, who are still in the Europa League, um, had FA Cup duties to think about. In fact, West Ham got kicked out, I think, late February. So you had the advantage in that sense. But what do you do? And this is the inexperience I was talking about. You let six players leave in the summer. Some of those players... In the winter. In the winter. Some of those players could have done a decent job for this Arsenal team. Now, let me go down into the nitty-gritties. In the summer, at the start of this season, mm -hmm. if you watched Arsenal last season, the Arsenal that finished eighth under Mikel Arteta, any time Partey got injured, there was a clear deficiency in the team. Their form went down. Any time Tierney got injured, there was a clear deficiency in the team. Their form went down. So what do you do? You can't guarantee that these players will be fully fit throughout the season. So as a big team, you go for replacements. You go for backups. Backups who are up to the standard of the guys who are already playing. Backups who can bring in competition. You go and get somebody who, when Pate is even fit and he's not doing well, that person can come in him. and replace him. Yeah. You get somebody that when Tierney is fit and he's not playing well, he can come in and replace him. But who are their replacements? The big teams have those examples. The big you teams have about. those examples. The Bruyne was out for the, almost six months. But Man last City season, doesn't feel it. The Man City fans will forget. Yeah. Jorginho can decide to sit six games on the bench. Chelsea fans will not know because yeah. Kovacic and Kante are more than capable of doing that job. There is quality, and that is what a big team is about. Okay? So if Partey gets injured, who comes in? Lokonga. Look at the gap in quality. Mm. If Tierney gets injured, who comes in? Tavares. Look at the gap in quality. And these are guys who were bought by Ateta. He let somebody like Maitland Niles go. And Maitland Niles is a utility player. He can play everywhere. He can do the interim job. He can do those one month or those five games that Partey is not around. Those five games that uh, Tierney is not around. He can fit in those positions and do a job for you. But you let all of them go because they don't fit in your plan. So they should go. And when they go... You don't replace them. And you have a, such a small group of, of, of players. And it's not like the quality is all around and you can use that small group of players. I've mentioned the quality is in like two or three players. So if injuries happen to those two or three players, what are you going to do? And, and it's all down to experience. Form, have lost form. Have lost form. And you see, friends, it's all down to inexperience. I'll tell you this, and Chelsea fans know this very obvious example. Diego Costa in his last season with Chelsea, yeah. in January, he was close to leaving because he had fallen out to the manager Antonio Conte. But he wanted what they to go to China. He wanted to go to China. Conte said, no, I don't like you. Personally, we don't like each other. Mm -hmm. But you are good for a job. And we have a job to do. So he's put his ego aside. We finished the job. And then after I win the league in, in the summer, at the end of the season, you can go where you want to go. And that's what he did. But with this Obama Young situation, this was a Lacazette guy who was already not scoring when Obama Young was around. You are letting your club captain, the most prolific goal scorer in your team, leave. And I'm not saying they should have kept him. But you had to get a replacement. It was a must. Once Arsenal were told point blank they were not going to get Vlahovic, for me, let Obama Young stay. Let him stay. You never know. You, you could, never know yeah. when you need him. And you right. see, you've already shown in the first few months of your reign that you can deal with him. You can deal with his excesses. So do that for six months because there's a very crucial job to do. That is finishing in the top four. After that... Then you sack him and let him go. Last example. Look at Dembele at, at Barcelona. Mm -hmm. We all know this transfer window in the, in the winter. Javi wanted him out. The boy said he won't go. They give him opportunities to leave. He said he won't go. And it got to a point. Barcelona almost forcing him out. Then Javi said, okay, fine. It's left with a few weeks with the transfer window. It doesn't look like this guy is going. 
He has quality. He may not be in my plans, but he has quality. So they look at what Dembele is doing for Barcelona. Key player. Key player for them. you want him to renew the contract. Exactly. Now, speak. That, yeah. You see, that is football. And these things it's come a, with... It's called it, it, it come, Look, it yeah. comes with experience. And first, friends, lastly, my point is, look, it is different if he's managing West Ham. It's different if he's of managing course. Everton. For teams like Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, Man City, you don't have six months... You don't have one year to build. And that, that whole idea of I'm building a team building is a it. fallacy. No. You have to be waiting Look, while friend, building. When Klopp came in, his first year came in October. He said he was building. But in January or in February, he was in a Carabao Cup final. Yeah. End of that season, he was in Europa a Cup, Europa, League, Europa League, League final. Yeah. The following season, he finished them in top four. The following season, he finished them in top four and they made a Champions League final. Mm -hmm. Then the season after that, he finished second in the league, won the Champions League. And after that, he won the league. That, that is, is progress. Yeah, that's building. That is progress. That is building. Progress is um, not talking and finishing eighth, and talking and yeah. finishing eighth, and talking <laughs> and finishing eighth. That is not progress. Josh, uh, Josh uh, wants me to point out to you that uh, Arteta did start the FA Cup campaign because the third round starts in January, mm -hmm. and he was already in by then. Uh, but yes, he says Arteta is not the guy. Uh, namely, yeah. um, a few minutes on Man United. Yeah, yeah. Ronaldo scored a brilliant hat trick. People say he start padding his only Norwich or why, why. But, namely, did you see the back heel from your now, good friend? You see, um, <laughs> we are in serious problem. <laughs> I saw my boy. <laughs> Look, Wait, somebody said he wants you to demonstrate what happened. And no, I said, you would take for Kratis' job. I have to, if maybe you have to bring your face and then I will clear your spectacles <laughs> from you. <laughs> Look, I've never seen it. Like Look, that. I have never in my life seen anything of that. Of that. Yeah. First of all, let's go to the football. Look. Wow, this player is a, a game clearly seen. Every, you see, like I said, it can never be the manager. No coach. It can never be the manager. Look at what happened yesterday. Popoba is asked to do a job. That he's not capable of. No. Under the circumstances, who should come and do the job? So you're saying Papa was you playing the DM and I'm do all the tackles? No. That, That's why they played it. I'm coming. I'm coming. You see, this boy is supposed to be the most intelligent player on the pitch. Coach, offensively, he was. I'm right. coming. You are asked to play in front of your back four. Agreed? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have been asked to do so. But under the circumstance where the usual McFred combo were nowhere to be found, mm -hmm. if you look at those present, those available, who should be picked in that position? It's Pogba, of course. Okay. Because at least in the French team, there are times where he plays there alongside uh, Igolo Kante when it was blessed. Man. There are times that you, you see him in the middle. So he was asked to play there. Okay. How do you play in that position? One. One, pop, one, pop, one, pop. That's the way. Look, the specialist in the position, the pelos. Had the excesses. I'm coming. The pelos, the buskets. Name them. They're not hard tacklers. Especially in possession. Yeah. One, two, one, two. Oh, what poor Pogba yesterday. He picks up the ball, and there are three Norwich players in, in front of him, and he's got options to pass the ball. He overlooked the options. And then he complicates the issues. He gets dispossessed. He cannot recover the ball. And the back line is under pressure. So, yes, so the boos were justified. The, absolutely. I started booing him before he was <laughs> even <laughs> substituted. <laughs> oh, you can ask and is get there and go. Yeah. When we did the, we did yeah, the yeah, match did game on radio. And I was like, look, if I'm the manager, I, text, I will substitute him quick after 30 minutes. Because, yes, you are not, that is not your role. But look, this is a World Cup. But instruction is instruction. Simple. Yeah. Simplify okay. things. Coach, you right now, do though, do you think United have a chance to finish? No, in the I don't top think four? they'll finish in the top four. Why not? They're only three points behind Spurs. Look, they'll get beat on Tuesday by, by Liverpool. Liverpool. And then Spurs. We thought Spurs were going to run away look, against Brighton. They lost. Listen, that one. No, United will get beat on Tuesday. Over the weekend, I think they play Arsenal That's again. Not, yeah. Then I, they will have to play Chelsea too. I, I think believe. they'll get beat again against Arsenal. And against Chelsea, I don't see how United will beat Chelsea at Old Trafford. Because if you look, this Norwich team has scored only eight goals, eight away goals. 
whole season. Two of them against United. No, before no, yesterday. Before, oh, United. before yesterday. Yeah. Now against Maguire and Lindelof. But for David De Gea, United should have lost the game yesterday. Yeah. David De Gea saved. Norris before, had a lot look, of really before good you, you, you uh, Cristiano Ronaldo even scored the first goal. De Gea had saved a one v one situation very early under five minutes. Unbelievable. And look at when it was 2 2. Look at the save we saw in yeah. the highlights. So, for you, there's so, no way United make tough. For no, no, no. I don't think. Because, right. look, Liverpool, there's so much at stake. You see, if Liverpool were not keenly involved in the title in race, the title race then you look at them to come out. Maybe they would drop their heads. But right. look, on Tuesday, they will eat them up good. <laughs> You're watching Scorecard on CTTV. I have your messages plus FA Cup action still to come on the show. You're watching Scorecard on City TV. Let me take a few messages that have come through as well on our WhatsApp number. Uh, you can keep your messages coming. Use the hashtag Scorecard on Twitter. Also on WhatsApp, you can send it to the number on your screen. This one says, Hi, Fento. I think the referee was actually daydreaming. Else how on earth could this be a penalty? Uh, African referees never cease to amaze me with their performances. That is so, so abysmal. It's a shame. And a dent on his integrity as a referee. Big ups to coach, my fellow Man United fan, and Daniel. Inusa Haruna, um, co senior high school in Nando. <coughs> Sorry, he sent that message. Um, good evening, coach Daniel and uh, Fencho. I want to ask coach uh, that is Man United, Man United are going to face Liverpool. Uh, okay, are Man United going to face Liverpool with the Matra Marque defending they did against Norwich? Don't get um, beat. Maguire <laughs> says Maguire should come to the GPL to learn better defending and end his career at Norwich. Happy Easter, he says. Um, Andrew in Cape Coast says, Hi, fam. Please ask coach to demonstrate how Maguire kicked Pogba with his size 50 boots. boots. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the Look, show, don't worry. Poor Pogba felt the size. <laughs> felt the uh, size. He was hitting the ground like that. He looked, look at this man. <laughs> You can't play football, you're kicking out, Charlie. This one, uh, Nyaso Inyeji. So the same thing happened to Chelsea last week when Alonso scored, a referee disallowed a goal. This is not a penalty, um, he says. Well, at least Alonso's one, the ball kind of touched his hands a little bit. Um, this one says, I'm waiting for Nimli to be appointed my United coach. My prayer every morning. Hello, in Adenta. Oh, it would be so lovely. And then you win the league with ah, chicken. Yes. The players I will recruit. <laughs> Who is Man City? Who is Chelsea? Who is uh, Liverpool? Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> you will what? The players I will recruit. Yes. Who will beat all these guys. With and these then you will win the league. Quick. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, when, I enter, look, when I enter there, Maguire, at the, the moment he sees my face, please sell me and let me go. <laughs> he will even tell the people to sell him. <laughs> he will not even trade. <laughs> uh, this one says... Uh, Akwesi from Bokrom Estate in Kumasi says, Good evening there. Ali versus Raja Mark. The VAR didn't give that angle you're showing now to the referee. The angle that was shown to him was like a humble. Interesting. Oh. Okay, so that may be a, a good explanation. But the VAR should show him every single angle. It, it makes no sense. And I haven't seen the other angle, so I don't know which angle, because I didn't see the game live. So I don't know which angles they showed the referee. But if what you're saying is correct, um, that wasn't fair on the referee at all. Um, Hi, Fent. He says, you owe us an apology for not bringing Panorama last Friday. You have no idea how depressed I was. <laughs> and anyway, Klopp and Pep are going to make it difficult for Man United to find a coach as Ten Hag just bottled his first trophy today. Oh. Roland Gambero in a shaman. Yes, I asked lost uh, in the, I think the, the Dutch, Dutch Cup, Cup final. final. And Kudus Mohamed got injured again. So he's out. I, I don't know how long he's out for, but he's injured. Um, really unfortunate, and uh, obviously we wish him all the best. I hope it's not a serious injury. Um, and I need to say that because Kudus will see this <laughs> because he watches the show all the time. All the so time. a speedy recovery, big boss. We, um, we wish you all the best. Um, good, good evening, fan. This is Edward. I think... Uh, the, the three pairings of Mount Kai and Timo is something Titi should take seriously and be our next formation going forward. Uh, for Lukaku, he should just leave. Uh, this one says, um, still top four is sure for we the Gunners and we will surprise everybody last minute. Also, my greetings to all St. Martin's from three students. Emmanuel from Tema Community 25. 
Um, good evening to Coach Chris. Obadai uh, in Odoko official town says, when you have the GOAT in your team, even at his old age, you are short of some unexpected hat-tricks like today. CR7 for life. All right. This one says, porcupines are not warriors in the north, but just mere rodents. We use them to prepare live soup. <laughs> we, we take do them. Nice to see David Abanya back, the star man. A Buftal in Tamale. Really good to see Abanya back. Uh, we've missed him since the AFCON. He's not really been back uh, until this game against Kotoko. So, fantastic. Thank Allah now. My, uh, he said my gate in United has finally won. But as for Magua, he's a brilliant defender, he says. I'm sure you're being sarcastic. This one says, good evening. I'm Best. That's his name. Best from Nigeria. He says, the GH League is interesting. It's my first time writing to you, but man, you will make top four. Thank you, Best, for tuning in all the way from Nigeria. Another message from Nigeria. This one from Ramsing in Lagos State. He says, Christopher Nimli, United fans booed Popogba. What is your take on that? Well, you heard him. He said he started booing him. I started booing him before the United booing. fans did. You should Os go so that we yes. have our peace. Osaka from Bulga says, Scorecard is the best program ever. Kudos to you guys, especially Coach Nimli and Daniel. But my CR7 was on fire yesterday. All praises to him. Mubarak from Spinter says, I wasn't surprised when Kotoko lost to RTU because at the back line, uh, our back line was a big problem. Okay. Ibrahim from Tamale says, Today RTU made my day by beating the league leaders Kotoko 2 1. And big up to Coach and Daniel for the incredible analysis. Uh, New um, Newtown from Dansuman Sahara says, Oh, it's Newton, sorry, not Newtown. Newton from Dansuman Sahara says, Great to see Fabio Gama playing. Kotoko definitely winning the league. Um, and he also says, Our Chelsea will end this Wembley final case against Liverpool. Great goal from Ronaldo. Um, thank you. My name is Roland, famous from OEB. I really like the way Coach Nimli analyzes, especially when Mayu wins a match. But please ask him for me if he thinks they can make top four. You heard the answer. I asked him. Castro Steve from China in the Upper East region says, Coach should begin to think of how to celebrate United trophies rather than celebrating Chelsea's defeat. At least Chelsea plays two finals this season <laughs> and a Club World Cup trophy. Oh what about United? <laughs> Interesting. This one says, my regards to you and your crew. So happy for the United win. And I hope they will build some momentum from that for the games ahead. Please, I want Coach to do the Maguake Kong Pogba. Uh, let's have some fun. CR7 from Wa with that message. One last one. Um, this one, it's from... Uh, Okay, so it says, uh, please, my name is Amoenim Benjamin, watching you live at Ekunfi Amesano. Uh, please, let Mr. Samoboju know that we, the fans, uh oh, it says, uh, let Samoboju know that we, the fans, are not happy at all with the performance of the guys. And, um, and they have to be talked to. We can't score more than two goals in a game. And even when we score, cra, after the goal pressure, and kwa, why? This season is bad for us. Hashtag scorecard. Thank you for your messages. I like the, the, the diverse nature of the messages, where they come from. From Nigeria, Upper East, Upper West, Upper uh, Northern Region. The RTU fans, are, uh, I can yeah, tell man. that a lot of them have come to watch the show mm, of course. because of the victory. And that's uh, very deserving. But let's do some FA Cup action. There were two semi-final games. Man City to call uh, Liverpool at Wembley on Saturday. Liverpool beat them by three goals to two. All right, so Man City tried to stage a comeback, but it was too little, too late. Liverpool booked their second final uh, this year, this season, and they are still in the semi-final of the Champions League as well. And then they are also in contention for the league title. So they are in contention for an unprecedented quadruple this season. Their opponents in the final on 14th of May will beat Chelsea, the same team they beat for their first trophy this season in the League Cup final. The Blues took on Crystal Palace, also at Wembley, and they won by two goals to nil. So Chelsea and Liverpool again on the 14th of May. Uh, namely, quick thoughts on, uh, on that potential final. Uh, well, not potential anymore, it's a final. Yeah, I but think both it was teams, not, yeah. yeah, it was never in doubt, especially with the Man City-Liverpool game, because this Man City team clearly didn't recover from the Diego Simeone's yeah. Atletico banter. And you could clearly see, even in the personnel, and on the day, tactically, technically, their usual standard had just dropped. 
So when we did the game on radio, I was so emphatic that I think Liverpool will win hands down because I believe that Liverpool had the better finishes and they looked a fresher team mm. compared to Man City. <coughs> when the game started, you could clearly see the intent of Liverpool. The midfield pair of Fabinho, Thiago and, and, and Naby Keita, they were absolutely all over the Man City guys. And the manner in which Thiago in particular dominated possession, kept the ball when he needed to, pass it for when he needed to, held it when he needed to, completely reminded everybody of what Man City themselves would usually be doing. So once Man City were not doing the things they normally do, and Liverpool rather was the team doing what Man City would usually do, mm -hmm. then you could clearly see the baton swinging in a certain way. And of course, that headed go from Kanute. I mean, he's proven to be... Kunati. Kunati, yes. Okay, he's proven to be a very, very good source of goal from set piece. Three games in a row. This was the third game in a row that he's headed from a corner kick. He's huge. He's big. And if you go back to the goal he scored, Man City had Gabriel Jesus yeah. marking, marking him. him. <laughs> and I was asking myself, That's John, comedy. John Stones and Nathan Ake, who played the setup on the day, were the two best headers of the ball. They should be picking up Kunate and Van Dijk. And leave the others for the other guys too. But it seems the marking was a zona one. Mm. So you just hold. But this guy, if you look at how big he is, yeah. when he's coming, he virtually bullies everybody. And of course, that second goal, of course, was a complete giveaway. And per the quality of the two teams, whoever takes that lead, 2-0, 3-0 lead, it becomes extremely difficult for the other team to actually recover. So it was never in doubt. On the part of Chelsea, I mean, if you look at what happened to them on Tuesday, this is the only possible trophy they're in for as we speak this season. So their intention was very clear. They needed to remind everybody how good a team the um, Chelsea themselves is. And for me, I was very happy to see them um, beat Crystal Palace. Because I want to see that beautiful fan again. Do I support them to win against Liverpool? No. That is an obvious answer every Chelsea supporter no, of course. So and you I would expect... rather Liverpool win the quadruple no. than see Chelsea win one? Liverpool will not win the league. Man City to win. I've already said it here. That City... I, you know, they, they, for me, I, I don't believe you anymore because last season you said Chelsea, there was no way they would win the Champions yeah, you won. And this is, I just told you, to not happen. And it didn't <laughs> happen, isn't it? It didn't happen. <laughs> so for me, I, I, you know, I support Liverpool to win. I think Liverpool will win the... the, the, the they, will, they will not win the league. They stand a good chance of winning the Champions League. But domestically, they've won the Carabao Cup. I expect them to beat Chelsea again and win the FA Cup. Yeah, this video is always recorded, so we'll be it, back. It to has it. always this one too is always recorded. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong, uh, Daniel? Quick thoughts on the uh, <laughs> on the two finalists. Uh, look, it's, it's it's certainly going to be an interesting game. Yeah? <clears throat> Every single Chelsea Liverpool game we've seen this season has been top class. Yeah. The, the competitiveness has been up there. Um, from it's the been one very one. little to separate yeah. the three of them. They have three draws, in fact. Yes. Yeah. Um, one one in Adamfield, two two at Stamford Bridge in the league. Then the Carabao Cup ended goalless. Very interesting. The most goalless exciting draw. goalless yes. draw this season. One twenty minutes and then went to penalties and unfortunately kept it happening. But we are guaranteed it's going to be another top quality game. And what, what I'm happy about is the fact that the three best teams in the country have. You look at the Carabao Cup. Chelsea, Liverpool were there. Uh, top three. It's not a fluke. Oh. F FA Cup, no, 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 Chelsea, they, Man City, right. Liverpool. And you see, all the teams are, the top teams are taking every single competition yeah, yes. seriously. And it, it's nice to see. Man City are in the last four of the Champions League. Liverpool are there. Chelsea were minutes away from being there. It just shows you that right now, look, my point is right now, if you want to compete, look, you have to be of a certain yeah. standard. If you yeah. can't beat these guys, then you have Forget no business con yeah, calling yourself a big team. All right. So there is that. Um, Let's move it on this time. Let's talk about the Italian Serie A. It's getting incredibly, incredibly tight at the top. Uh, and now AC Milan and Inter Milan are making it a two-horse race. Uh, Inter Milan, they were away from home uh, to Spezia. They won by three goals to one. AC Milan played at home to Genoa. They also got a win. Take a look at the two matches. Good result on a good Friday for Inter Milan uh, and AC Milan, both of them, of course. Let me show you the results uh, sheet from the Serie A this weekend. See who is doing what as far as that's concerned. Um, all right, let's see. There you go. Thank you. Lazio drawing 
1-1. Juve also dropping points. Fiorentina won at home. Samdure lost at home. Odinese thumped Empoli 4-1. Cagliari 1-0 winners over Sassiolo. And AC Milan and Inter Milan's results. You see them there as well. Um, Napoli and AS Roma, I think, is tomorrow. Uh, Monday night. So Atalanta and Verona as well. So that's to come. All right, um, let's move it on elsewhere. So like I said earlier, in fact, <laughs> I told you that Kudus was watching this show. I've just got a message from him. <laughs> he's not injured. <laughs> oh, he said he's not injured. Okay. So yeah. that's good news. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. It looks like an injury, but it's not okay. an injury. So we are happy for please, him. Please, alhamdulillah. We please. He's not injured. The message came from him. He's, uh, he's, no, he, he okay. came on. And it was after the game. Okay. And he was being attended to so. Okay. So, but he said, he's not injured. He's, he's not injured. So please, forgive me for the earlier information. He's not injured. What I saw is not an injury. You are not a doctor. So you yes. can't see uh -huh. things. Thank you see. very much. Uh -huh. so I can't make that determination. Yes. So he's fit. <laughs> more are, minutes. You, more want power to be, to you want to behave like the person who said, we, we thought. thought. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you thought? I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move it on. Uh, to La Liga, Atletico Madrid. They took on Espanyol. Now, before that, Real Madrid did the unthinkable. They came from behind to beat Sevilla by three goals to two to maintain their... 12 point lead at the top of the league. That game ended a few minutes just before we came on air. But we have one highlight to show you, and that's Atletico's victory against West Virginia. It was a 2 0 win. Um, so there you go. And the goals came from a setting Carrasco. It was mm. 2 1, sorry, not 2 0. Uh, it came from Carrasco, Yannick Carrasco. One of the goals was a penalty very, very late on. So Atletico Madrid. After the drama of the Wednesday night Champions League game against Atletico Madrid, have uh, found themselves back playing in La Liga. And they needed to win to boost their chances of finishing in the Champions League place next season. Uh, and that is extremely crucial because, um, you know, you're looking at a situation where Atletico Madrid could do what they have done this season and not play in the Champions League next season. So... They needed, they desperately needed to win this, and they did in the hardest way possible. And that victory now means that um, Atletico Madrid uh, have moved above Real Betis, uh, three points above Betis into fourth position. So they occupy the Champions, the last Champions League spot there. Sevilla, Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, those are the four teams in the top four as they stand. Uh, with some six games remaining uh, to the end of the La Liga season. The victory uh, was the penalty. Um, so it was basically like Carrasco stressing everybody at Espanyol. There he is again before he was awarded a penalty very, very late on. VAR review, uh, handball, boom, penalty, gave it, and Carrasco stepped up and then bang, uh, scored the winner for them. Uh, three points for Atletico Madrid, and that's that. Uh, let's show you the full results from La Liga this weekend and see uh, what the full results are. Um, so there you go. <laughs> Bilbao lost at home to Celta Vigo. Namely, you will like this start. Inaki Williams played this game, and he set a record in La Liga. In six consecutive seasons, he has played Every single game in the league for Athletic Bilbao, 224. Wow. wow. 38 times 6. In a row. In a row. In a row. Never been injured, never been suspended. Boy. Every single He's game. a machine. He's every a machine. single match. A 38-game season. He plays every single game. For six years. For six, for six years. years in a row, namely. He's never been injured. He's never been suspended. Then he takes good care of himself. He yeah. does. He takes good care of himself. I, I, look, the injury part, I can understand. How about the suspension? He's, he's never accumulated yellow yeah, cards. He must be... Yeah. Uh, that's unbelievable. In Aki Williams. His brother also playing the game, but they lost anyway. The rest of the results, you see them there, as I said. Barcelona Cardiz is tomorrow night, Monday night. Okay? Um, 
quick, quick one from the Bundesliga before we go. Uh, Bayern won and Borussia Dortmund also won, which means that the showdown this weekend, the De Classica at the Allianz Arena, mm -hmm. will determine who is champion. Bayern will win. Bayern win their champions. They will win the and what are we going to win? They will win and they'll be crowned champions. And that will be league. 10 league titles in a row. Congratulations. Yeah, but no Champions them. League for them. No Champions League. I mean, that is, if you look at the dominance they've had, they should have at least shown at least two or three Champions League titles. In that 10 year yeah, period. Because they are that good. In that 10 year mm. period, they only have one. Well, one. they have only two. One. 10 years. They have two. 2013 is part of the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. yes. So they have two. Yeah, two. Okay. So they have two. Should, they should have more. All right. Especially on that. Uh, congratulations to Samuel Techi as well. He won his first professional fight as a boxer against Kamal Dean Boy Fio. So congrats to him. Uh, he started a journey. Uh, we hope that journey ends with him being crowned world champion one day. My name is Fentio Tahir Fentio, coach Christopher Nimli, Daniel Crown Thing. Always a pleasure. Until next time, do take care and bye-bye.